going on everybody? Happy Saturday. It's like November 5th or 6th, something like that. Uh, just wanted to do an introduction and a tool review. Uh, and a truck review. I don't really care. You guys want to see it. Uh, my name is Ryan. I'm 29. I do mobility HVAC for AT&T. We work on their cell phone towers. If you guys didn't know, at the bottom of every cell phone tower, there's a shelter or a cabinet site where those cables run into that shelter and they connect the servers inside of there or antennas. And uh, those antennas create heat, so you got to keep them cool, especially when they're locked inside of the shelter. So that's what we do. Mostly we deal with wall mounted package units, bar, bar bear, Andrew, uh, McLean, stuff like that. Um, I do have split systems, mini splits, plate heat exchangers that I have to work on. Um, I'm on call 24-7-365. I get the six national holidays off, but if something comes in on those holidays, you have to run the call. You get paid holiday time for it, so it's whatever. But um, One thing, one of the major differences is I work under an all contract so you guys will see in some some of my videos that you might consider it half-assed but the the vendor that we work for just does not will not pay for good parts you know I'll show you the, the parts and stuff that we use and you guys will just those of you who know will know you know the the vendor we work for will not pay for quality work they want the cheapest shit on the market but they want it done the best way you know it's like you know that's not how it works you know, quality work takes time, not 10 minutes. So that's one of the big things that you'll notice. You'll see me say things, but I don't exactly say why. It's because I know how the vendor is, and I know what they're going to approve and what they're not going to approve. Um, you know, there's a the cost of doing business. Uh, I'm just going to digress here. But that company just, they don't understand that. Everything's cheap. Everything's as minimal cost as possible. And uh, just, I can digress about it for a long time, but it is what it is. But that's what I do. That's who we work for. I love the company that I work for. They're a great company. They treat me well. Uh, there's a lot of leniency, especially with us being on call all the time. It's very strenuous. Uh, not too much on the body. It's very strenuous up here for me. I have a very high metabolism. I don't get tired really easy. I can work 14 hour days continuously and never get tired. I only sleep about four hours a night as it is anyways, uh, with or without my kids. Uh, I'm a single parent. That probably just gave it away with or without my kids, but I'm a single parent. Um, I have my children 50% of the time. And, um, I do, you know, and that's really about it about me, I think, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments, uh, I'll read them and get back to you, uh, but I think that wraps that up, do a little bit of tool reviews, some stuff that I use on a more regular basis. On a not so regular basis, so I guess we'll just start with the pack out. This top section here, you guys can see Schrader cores, depressors, pistons, 3 8 gaskets, quarter inch gaskets. Uh, these have the gaskets for my core tools, uh, flare tights. If you guys don't know what these are, if you guys are doing a lot of line dryers, flares, I know some of you guys are, see your videos. You guys need to be using these flare tights, not just nylog. These flare tights are the shit. Excuse my language. And obviously you just got the Teflon O-rings for compressors. We got your C&D locking caps, your JB ones, and then I just keep, you know, caps in here with the cores on it. These little white ones are stupid, but man, they'll save you sometimes. And I keep caps with no, no core tool on them. High voltage connectors. Let me 
you're jumping two together. I don't like high, I don't like wire nuts for high voltage. I like this this thing right here. Sometimes the wire is too big. You get that real 10 gauge, 8 gauge wire. You can't really fit those wires into here. But high voltage uh, spade connectors. These are high voltage compressor connectors. You can use them semi universally, but you really only use them for compressors. Because if you use them on certain these on certain compressors, it won't allow you to get that cover back on, and it jams them. And these things are cheap. You can bend this metal thing right off. These are like just so cheap. Then here, this is what we used to use. Now they just send us these crappy blue ones, the dark blue ones without the insulation on them. But there's a female and male. So I kind of only use these for certain scenarios now because they stopped supplying them and I want to have them for certain situations. Uh, low voltage wire nuts. I like these ones with the little blue grommet on it to protect it. Some of you guys just still haven't figured out how to use a wire nut yet either. And I keep the little gray ones in there. Fuses, three, fives, tens, fifteens, twenties. Not twenties. I think there's a thirty in there too for whatever reason. Um, refrigeration, access fittings, the high and low one for your vehicle, truck, car, van, SUV. Hmm. Uh, this one right here is to get onto a uh, mini split and allow your gauge to hook up to it on this end. Got a relief already built in. Uh, the pink one is mini splits, Schrader tool for the mini splits, the black ones just for your standard uh, quarter inch, you know, split systems or just your quarter inch fittings. This one's a 5 16 uh, Keep an extension, a six inch Phillips, another Schrader tool, another ball valve, this little 90 degree, you just put a you know, your 5 16 quarter inch, three eighths, half inch in there, that goes into your drill. Just allows you to get into a tight 90 degree spot. More bits in there. 7 16 half inch, 3 eighths, square drive, Torx, number three Phillips. This is a flathead and a number two Phillips. As you guys can see, this has a two-way divider in it. I've seen some of you guys hacking it and making it a four-way, but somebody makes this one, which gives you five. Somebody makes this one, which gives you eight, which is real cool. Three, six, yeah, eight. Really nice, really nice dividers, but normally they just come with these big, this one center insert. I've seen guys, slicing it down here and taking the extra one or another one to make it a four-way but yeah, you can do it whichever way you want i got these on ebay it came with five of them four of these and one of these these ones are connected this is actually just one one whole piece right here it just slides right in there it was like 18 bucks for the the five pack so i was just like whatever uh, and that's it for that And here, just keep batteries and chargers. Everybody's got their own preference of what they want to use the stuff for, but I got too many batteries and chargers to sit there. It came with the Kaizen foam, so I just cut it down real thin and put a layer of it on the bottom, as you can see it down there. Just put a little thin layer, a half inch layer on the bottom or so. Uh, it's a knockoff charger. I fucked up somewhere along the lines when I ordered that a few, a year or two ago. 18 volt and 12 volt. I just got this one, the rapid charger, um, two or three weeks or two weeks ago or so. 18 volt, 12 volt. And I got just a standard 12 volt and I keep this one too. This is a 12 volt charger. It's got a USB in there to charge your phone, laptop, whatever. Then I also keep uh 12.0. This one works wonders in that sh the shot back. The only two reason why I have these two 18 volt is only for that shop bag. That is the only tool, Milwaukee tool that I own that is 18 volt. Otherwise, 12 volt has always done it for me in the HVAC industry. Some of you guys say differently, but I've always been able to do my job with these tools right here. A couple 6.0s, three 4.0s, 2.0, compact 3.0, compact 3.0. That's it. I see, you know, I've seen. All these videos where guys cut their chargers and two batteries in there nice and neatly and it's like dude you just wasted all that space in my opinion you know to each their own you can do what you want but when 
you got that many batteries and chargers, I find that's the best way to do it. And down in the bottom here is just the power tools, as most of you probably do. I keep the Dwyer Magnahelic in here. It's just, just this is a one inch. I like the mechanical one better than all these new uh, electronic ones that are coming out. I don't like any of that electronic stuff. If I have to pull my cell phone out for it to read the temperatures and pressures, I don't want it. Don't want it. Just a whole saw kit. I definitely don't need any of that kind of equipment. I like, you know, that any of the testos or the field piece or the, you know, I manifolds and shit like that. I don't need none of that stuff for the job that I do here. That stuff's only for air. was a critical analysis, you know? Saws all blades, keep some step bits in there too. Wood, metal, a pair of gloves. That's my one of my favorite tools, the circuit breaker finder, Klein makes it. You plug this into your outlet, say just any outlet in your home, and you'll take this tool, hit the on button, and you scan the breaker panel, and when this light turns green, that's the breaker that, you know, that, that outlet is controlled by whichever breaker makes this arrow turn green. So. That's a great tool to have. 30 foot tape measure, big pair of copper cutters that I hardly ever use anymore. It's an eight to five eighths. Every size you need right there. Just about. Pull that out. Ah, this is just a standard sawzall. Not the fuel. I keep the compact shop back, cleaning up my you know, your micro, your solid, you know, your drywall dust messes, cutoff tool. All the extensions for that vacuum. Milwaukee Spotlight, I mainly use this for hunting, fishing. That one doesn't come out too much during the night. And then just the, here's the, uh, the blades and stuff. Actually needs to go in there for that cutoff tool. And then this is for the cutoff tool as well. You can hook a shot back up to it. Pretty neat. Here's the fuel uh, hammer drill, two speed. And here's a, just a standard driver. This isn't the fuel. I'm gonna keep a heat gun and a Makita grinder. I actually don't even need that because that cutoff tool does everything that I need that to. Cause I'm not working on, I don't need to cut a lot of things. It's usually just small pieces of metal and it's a lot easier than pulling that big old grinder out. So that's why I don't use that grinder too much. That's actually why I invested in getting this cutoff tool because I was tired of on these cell phone sites you'll find that it's hard to find power on them as well. Very hard to find a reliable source of power. So let me get this all packed up. I'll move on to the next thing. It's one of my favorite tools as well. Two gallon, pop that M12 in there, she rips. Uh, top section just has all the attachments in it and stuff. On off button. Obviously that bottom section is where all the water goes. Okay. And here's the Milwaukee True View tripod spotlight. This is what I use for all my nighttime work. That tripod right there. I love it. 
takes an M12 battery, or you can put, run direct power to it from you know an outlet uh, through an extension cord. It extends up, pivots, goes in. So stay. Spin it to where you want. Normally you just grab the damn thing and turn it like that though. But this is what I use for all my nighttime work. I think it's 1400 lumens, so if you're working out at midnight and you ain't got no light, this thing takes it from nothing to daytime. Just like that. Okay. I'm gonna come up here with this stuff. Working on this bigger bag right here. This is my everyday carry bag, but this has all my spare shit. Uh, oh great, that broke. Just another magnet, extension, pick up drop screws and stuff. I have multiples of like every tool. If you don't, know, uh, Sharpie in there. What's in here? Oh, four way water key. Chiller key. I haven't needed that chiller key in a long time. Uh, 716 3.8s, half inch sockets. This is the Malco Quick Connects. If you need to change to a nut driver for some reason, keep that in there. Uh, nine inch linesman's, Milwaukee. Or eight inch, eight inch diagonal cuts. 1000 volt insulated breaker screwdriver. Fuck that, I'm not taking all this out. Uh, service wrench, got an extra one down in there too. 1000 volt Phillips head, extra, that's a mini crescent wrench. Comes in handy for, uh, you know, service valves, locking caps. Uh, 532nd Allen wrenches for set screws. three of those. I don't need them anymore, but he's, I don't know. He's, <laughs> most of the heaviest stuff I'm roping up is 15, 20 pounds. I'm just going to pick you guys up here because I'm not taking all this stuff out. Uh, just a big extension right here. It's like a 12 inch extension, two, six, two uh, big crescent wrenches, six inch. Here's uh, quad box wrenches. These are my favorite, some of my favorite tools. 5 eighths and 3 quarter, 9 sixteenths and 11 sixteenths, 12 points so they go on anything and they reverse rotation and they're ratcheting. They're wonderful. I bought two kits. That's why I have two of them because they were cheap. They also came with two smaller size ones, which I'll get to here shortly. This is just a more sturdy thermostat screwdriver in case the one I normally carry breaks or something like that. Extra pair of channel locks. This is a... Uh, this is the cut and splice your own ethernet cable connections, big flathead uh, for banging and pounding. Got the smooth blade insulation knife. And I got the duck knife with the smooth blade. This is the best knife sharpener I've ever found. It's about 14 bucks on Amazon. Get a little wet, man, your knife will literally cut your finger off. It's, you gotta be very careful using this. I'm serious guys. You sharpen your knife with this and that thing is razor sharp. It's awesome. Uh, capacitor strapping. It's actually plastic, but it works wonderful and it's super cheap. Compressor puller. I don't even know why that's in there. That's a mini one. I have a bigger one back there in the top, right next to that nitrogen tank. You can see the handle right between the 134. Got the bigger one back there. Anyways, uh, there's a hammer down there, some aviation snips. And that coil straightener and as you can see it's brand new two years old brand new never used <laughs> uh, some real pvc cutters these ones suck i did have the old ones my grandpa gave me a pair from like 19 like the 80s and they were the shit the blade just got a little dull so it was a little hard to use uh, another concrete bit no oh, that's got a fucking these assholes 
with an impact on it. Okay. That just needs to go in here. I'll try to try to keep certain things. I don't use drill bits a lot anymore, so they don't need to be <clears throat> in either of my tool bags. <clears throat> uh, got the spin swage and spin flare down there. And I think that's it. No, uh, those white ones are just for trimming cheap pair of uh, PVC cutters. Uh, this is for cutting like vinyl tubing, um, rubber, gasket, you know, hoses, anything rubber, this thing will chop right through it. It's just like a huge long razor blade. The Craftsman Handy Cuts, they're nice to keep. And this one, uh, these are just for cutting branches around condensers to keep them out from poking you in the back and stuff because I just can't stand that stuff. So I'll cut them. These will probably go better in down that way. Yeah. And I can go back in there on oh, then fuse pullers. Uh, drywall knife. And this is another tamper proof. This is tamper proof. Tamper proof <laughs> screwdriver kit. And I'll show you guys. That's just my backup. I'll show you the one I primarily use here in a minute. Make sure we put everything away. Oh, okay. This, that needs to stay up. Okay. Oh. Uh, then up here, got your JB locking cap tool for all four of the different style locking caps. Got your yellow jacket gasket remover and depressor remover. Another Schrader core tool remover. Another yellow jacket. Two of those gasket tools. These are my favorite copper cutters. They're Milwaukee, but they do inch and an eighth. Eighth of an inch to inch and an eighth. Big cutters doing small small cutters doing a big job. But I like. Um, then I also have uh, just three different ramers. These two are the same. This one's for a bigger pipe. That's what I keep up here on the top. I actually have another one of these yellow jacket tools somewhere too. I know I have three of them. That goes in the bag and now we'll get to my carry bag. M12 Surge. With the DeWalt two inch extension with the uh, Malco quarter inch five sixteenths. Uh, cheap ass Vaughn Temco quarter inch self tappers. Wire nuts. I only use wire nuts typically for diagnosing, you know, jumping out of thermostat to see just to verify that's what's wrong. Dumb stuff like that. Uh, Here's that thermostat screwdriver. I use this one the most. This Klein one. It spins, so you just hold it in your finger. Go like that. You got a bigger flathead with a smaller Phillips. And you pull it out, and you got your bigger Phillips with your smaller flathead. So, works great. I just leave the two bigger sides out. I really have to pull it out. 532nd hollow point hollow shaft nut driver. Just a cheap little craftsman one. Uh, on these, uh, on some of these universal motors, the shafts stick out on both sides of the motor, you know, two, three inches. Just to snap them off, tighten down those screws and snap them off. No walking crimpers, six inch crescent wrench. Uh, Milwaukee's multi tool. It's like a six, six in one wire stripper. Needle nose, whatever else, I don't even care. I only use the needle strippers. Needle strippers and wire nose is what I was gonna say. The wire strippers and the needle nose. Another pair of channels. Some spare wire and zip ties, electro tape. Thousand volt insulated screw flathead. And here's the tamper proof bit that I use frequently the most. Cause it's just better in my preference. So here's the handle, 
some uh, Klein. And here's all the bits that come with it. It's about 30 bucks, 29.99 at my Home Depot. And all the indentations is what we need. You can't just use a standard Torx or standard Allen or anything like that. You have to have these indentations in it to get over the little stud that's in the screws. So that's that. Razor blades don't need to be in here. Half inch socket, uh, jump kit, low voltage, whatever. A headlamp, even though I hate headlamps. Sometimes you just need them. And this is my favorite box wrench. And my favorite tool that I keep in that tool bag other than my drill. Okay, gear wrench. This was the other part of those bigger box wrenches I just showed you that I keep in my big bag right here. It's got 5 16ths and 7 16ths, 3 8 and half inch. All the sizes we primarily use in the HVAC and refrigeration industry. It's all uh, ratcheting and reversible. So on all ends. So that's my favorite tool. is really just used to change a condenser fan loader except this. This is for certain type of screws which are only on cabinet sites so I don't have very many of them but I need it just for those particular ones. And I'm gonna keep this piece of shit meter. It's fluke it's good don't get me wrong it's a good meter but the leads come out the bottom and there's no fucking magnet. It drives me nuts. My own fault but I got it for free I wasn't sure. Anything that's for free, you know, I'm taking, so. Unless it's junk, I ain't taking free junk. Oh, I ain't taking no fucking CE electric meter, I'll tell you that. Oh, and then I just keep the leads on the other side right here. So that's it for the majority of that. And now, I used to keep this damn pack out kit. I used to keep it right here in the side of my freaking truck. Right here in my back seat. I used to keep it right there. The bigger tool bag goes right there where those indentations are. And then my everyday carry where I would tuck underneath the seat right there. So now I'll just be able to throw my bigger bag up there and my everyday carry. I'll be able to free up that space down there. Um, I'll show that in a second. Uh, refrigerant scale. We'll do, we'll do some truck stuff real quick. Back up a little bit. Refrigerant scale. This is a bus fuse container from Johnstone Supply. Just keeps all your different size bus fuses. Big ones, small ones, and that. It's a really cool kit. So I can show you. I've used some of them, so it's not completely full, but as you can see, comes with quite the number of different size fuses in there. Uh, this space back here because I hardly ever use it. I don't have many fuse disconnects and stuff. So. Even though it's all on commercial setting. It's really weird. Um, let's see. Right here in this bin is those Ranko NEMA 4X controllers. Right above it is some 410A high and low pressure switches, R22 high and low pressure switches, uh, line dryers, you know, 163s, 83s, and half inch 164s. Uh, all my different size copper fittings from uh, 3 8 couplings and 90s all the way up to 7 8 couplings and 90s. So, different size PVC fittings. This is a uh, this is an attachment for my shop back. This will help me allow to get down into drain pans, like in uh, residential. Let me get to that back corner and then drain pans. Yeah. Works great. Uh, keep some hot shot, ant, roach, and spider. Uh, this is another fitting. You take this piece off. 
that's a one inch piece. So if you got a three quarter drain line popping out on the side of your house, this piece will go right over the top of it and look how sn nice, snug, hard pull. So that's what that's for. And here's, this, here's most of the wire terminals our company now uses instead of what I showed you. Those crappy low voltage blue terminals without the insulation suck. I use these yellow ones. They used to send us butt connectors, but they got rid of them. I just have all these. I've never even opened this box. I was like, why do I even have these? I don't need them. I'm not I'm not splicing high voltage wire. I'll run new wire, right? Then you got these terminal multipliers. These are awesome. These doohickeys will save you. Here's your part number. bolts for condensers. I've already got them pre most of them are already pre-made up with a locking nut and a wash a locking nut a locking washer and a nut. So that's really all that's there and I also have an acetylene opener in here for whatever reason. <laughs> Go ahead and shut that back up. And in here I got that Viper wet rag heat blocking compound. I got all my different uh, cutoff blades for that bigger grinder. Uh, Nylog red. And I, like I said, I, we don't use wire nuts very much, but I do keep some just in case. Uh, a lot of these, I've also came across uh, some systems missing the, uh, the plug where the drain line isn't supposed to be, but they knocked it out anyway. So I use these to fill those back in. That's really it, that's in this little container. If I could fit this into that right over there, I would, but it doesn't. So, this is literally just a bunch of relays, ICM modules, ice cube relays. Um, you got your, what are these? Your 92380s. It's all different size relays right there. Um, I like uh, abrasive sand cloth as opposed to that screen sand cloth. The screen sand cloth drives me fucking nuts. Uh, I like uh, AeroCoil. It's one of the best sprays I've used personally. The Jack of all sprays I hear is pretty good. Ted likes that one a lot. Thieves are wrong. Um, up here, I use this stuff as more of like uh, it's foam tape, but it's real thick and dense and hard to bend and stuff. So I use it more just for like vibration purposes. I get a lot of discharge lines rubbing out on the suction line on these things. So I'll just finagle a piece of this in there between them so they don't touch anymore. Other than that, I don't have a use for that stuff really. Um, I know I just showed you guys that coil, but I keep a bigger can up there. I got my... Uh, Leak detector fluid. I got the blue one in here too. I don't know if you guys can see it, but yeah, there you go. A couple things of leak detector fluid. I used a Bacharach Informant 2 leak detector. It's actually at home right now. Screen. I hate this shit, but I keep some just in case, you know. Just because you don't like it doesn't mean you shouldn't have it in backup. And that's just some screws, I think. Yeah, half inch screws. I don't even know why I have this. Some wasted space on here. You can see I got copper and some PVC right here. Uh, another thing of solder. And that's it for this side. We'll lock up as we do this. Roll on over to this other side. Uh, I keep a CO2 gun and some CO2 cartridges. Blow out some of these drain lines. Uh, three quarter self tappers. It's kind of a waste of space. This has 60s, 70s, and 80 MFT capacitors in it. Just look blue down. This has 45s, 50s, and 55s. Looks like I need to put 
couple more 45s in there. Uh, low voltage contactors with 24 volt coils. This is anything from 5 to 15 capacitors. Then one underneath it is 20s to 40s. That's your 40. Uh, these are condenser fan hubs. You gotta replace the hub. That's a shot, you know, if it breaks or something, you need them. We use them pretty frequently, so we got high voltage uh, 208, 240 coil voltage contactors. And we got some 110, 120 coil voltage contactors. Uh, we use the Teach 4 Pro thermostats. Uh, if we have to replace one of these lead lag controllers, this is some extra wire, some extra capacitors. You know, it's a 10, but if I come, a, it's probably a little weak, but if it's, you know, if I come across a system that needs a five and this thing has 7.2 in it, you know, I'll just put this in instead of getting a five. Uh, Johnson controls. Uh, Thermostats, these are 164 half inch, yep. We have some half inch dryers that we need. Um, high voltage wire, running new wires for compressors. And that's pretty much it for this side. size filter that I most commonly use right here in the back. These are the best rubber gloves. Anything that's six mil is really good, but these grease monkey ones, man, they're the shit. Excuse my language. Um, now we'll get to those in a second. Let me do the inside of the truck and keep some stuff there. These gloves freaking suck. You gotta put two on each hand just for it to even be remotely worth using. But I'll digress. As you can see, I actually just built this little L this morning with this wood. I actually have another piece that I was thinking about putting right here to box that whole thing in because I can't work with this thing in my truck like that. It's not very heavy. What makes it heavy is all this stuff. And we'll just take that off, pop it up, bam. Box it. Now I do have this piece of wood to go right here. But I need to get screws long enough to go down that way. I did based off laying it this way, but I don't want to take up too much space. I want to see if it even slides that way either. And I really don't need it, but for now we're just going to let it be. Get that other piece too. I don't use this very much, so... Should be a little off 
behind this. So we have a little black bungee cord to go between these things to keep this leg. Keep that leg in there. I'll have to pull that out until I find that bungee cord. But anyway, that's how that would go. I'll show you guys the back here real quick. You guys can beat me up all you want. I've asked for certain things I just don't receive, so. Uh, I keep some extra storage bins, uh, extra storage bin, an extra tool bag. Got nitrogen, oxygen acetylene, 134A. Back here I keep all my different hoses. Uh, I think might be some rope in there, as well as extension cords, cheater cord, and a battery charger. I think that's what's in that box down there. Other than that, got the recovery machine right there, vacuum pump right there. Uh, some real 22, don't use that too much, side jobs. 410A, 407, brand new thing of 407 right there. This is a, uh, here's the pressure washer for cleaning coils. The little works, 100 PSI thingy. Looks great. Not gonna get into that a whole lot. And here's my, uh, the extension cord and the refrigerant hoses that I use the most, the 3 8 with the quarter inch. 3 8 on that side, quarter inch on this side with the little 45 angle on it. Keep a rope in there. Got a fan puller. An ice cream in there for whatever reason. A relay in there for whatever reason. And an extension. Oh, just a big box of capacitors. All my extras that I use. Instead of keeping them in, keeping them in my storage, I just, just get a big box and keep them all in the truck so that way you're always you literally always have what you need because if I have to drive to Lake Placid and I don't have a 40 MFD capacitor I'm the one I'm the type of person who gets mad that you put a 15 in where a 10 supposed to be or something like that you know I just don't do that so I'll literally beat myself up for doing that Mentally. Up and we'll put this. The other thing, my light stays in the truck too. This big tripod, I don't let it roll around. So now we just freed up some room to just slide it on down in there. Other than that, uh, might as well. Here's my storage unit. We're just in a storage complex. We don't, uh, we, uh, like I said, the company I work for is out of state. They ship everything to us. We order everything through Johnstone Supply and uh, everything gets shipped to us, you know, except gases, re reclaim tanks, stuff like that. I also got the Milwaukee Dolly when I need it. I got a bigger Dolly back there. See it right between them black things, the yellow one. Um, <clears throat> All these boxes are just different size filters. This is a rack. This rack is just like this rack. Yeah. But other than that, that's what I do. This is our storage unit. We've got some garbage. My empty tanks go up in the front. My full ones stay in the back back there. Um, that's pretty much it. Like I said, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, criticism, you know, it's all good. Feel free to ask. This is just what I do. Maybe I didn't explain something clear enough for you. Just feel free to ask any questions on what you may feel or what have you. So I hope everybody's having a great day. See you guys on the next one.